Emily, Asa and I, plus Nana, which is my mother-in-law, spent 25 days traveling across Europe. I'm gonna be breaking down for you the flights, accommodation, and activity expenses on our 25 day trip, where we went across England, Ireland, Italy, and Greece. We had a fantastic time on our trip, and I think it's great to share the costs because part of enjoying our lifestyle and spending our time together is going traveling. And I know a lot of you guys who are investors and homeowners will wanna be looking at your next trip. So we are based out of Brisbane, and so we flew from Brisbane directly to London. It was around a 20 hour flight, and Asa did a really good job as our little one year old getting across from Brisbane to London. The flight set us back $1,400 per person, and we flew with Singapore Airlines with a short layover at Singapore Airport. We had a fantastic experience dealing with Singapore Airlines. They went above and beyond with our little one year old, and it just made it a really easy start to our trip. We then landed in London and spent a few nights in the heart of London. We stayed at a place called the Victory House Hotel in Leicester Square, which I know is very touristy and busy, but we really enjoyed spending a couple of days in Leicester Square because we could catch the underground very easily. We could go to Soho, Covent Garden, uh, and go to the places that we wanted to, as well as see a show in Leicester Square. So we went to the Book of Mormon, had a fantastic time, and ate a lot of food while we explored London. So the cost to stay at the Victory Hotel was 250 $53 per person per night. And this is all in Australian dollars. So, so far we'd spent $1,400 per person on flights, $253 per person per night at the Victory House Hotel, and we stayed in London two nights. I even made the girls go across the Harry Potter experience after landing at 5 a.m. in the morning in London time. Uh, and we went in and we almost fell asleep on the way back home from the Harry Potter experience. It was a good first day. So after spending a couple of days in London exploring, we then made our way to Manchester. Now Manchester was on my bucket list. We wanted to explore the city and most importantly go to a Manchester United game. So we went to Old Trafford and had an amazing time. The tickets set us back around $750 Australian per person. We got the luxury experience tickets which meant that we had a VIP experience, ate some food, had some guest speakers, got to do a stadium tour, a museum tour and of course watch the game. So we watched Man United play Fulham for the very last game of the season and I had a fantastic time. It was top of my bucket list to do that and everything else on this trip was really planned by Emily when it comes to activities. So we stayed at the Motel One in St. Peter's in Manchester and that set us back $108 per night. Our travel from London to Manchester was via train and only set us back around $100 per person. After enjoying a few nights in Manchester, we then made our way to Dublin Island and we were planning on spending three nights in Ireland. We actually had our worst flight experience going from Manchester to Dublin. We flew with a company called Aer Lingus and they had delays when checking in. It took us over two hours with our one-year-old to check in for our flight because you had to do it in person and there was only one person serving at the counter. But thankfully, after we made it to Ireland, we had a fantastic time. Dublin is just such a beautiful place to explore. We spent $118 per night and we stayed at a place called the Drury Court Hotel. Now, all these places for our accommodation, I did lots of research on, looked for value for money and looked at the location. So we always wanted to stay in prime locations, especially with a one-year-old, we wanted to be able to walk from place to place to make sure that we could see the sites we wanted to see as well as get back to the hotel quickly. The other thing we did in Dublin was get a hire car, which generally, after, after using the hire car, I wouldn't recommend. You can really get around for a lot cheaper with public transport and using taxis and Ubers when you need to. So that car hire set us back around $233 per person for the three days. And the flights with Aer Lingus were around $307 per person to get to Ireland. After enjoying our time in Ireland, we then headed over to Italy, which we were going to spend nine nights in Italy. The flight set us back $347 per person and we flew with Ryanair and actually had a great experience with them. The nine nights we were spending in Italy were gonna be three nights in Venice, three nights in Rome and three nights in Positano. We stayed at the Hotel Comercioso in Venice for $145 per person per night and enjoyed exploring Venice, looking at the canals, walking around the city and really taking in the sights and eating a lot of pasta and looking for pizza as well. But apparently they don't have wood fired ovens in Venice. So it's not necessarily the best place to get your pizza. We then made our way from Venice down to Rome and again, spent three nights in Rome. 
We actually flew from Venice to Rome and in hindsight we probably should have caught the train. The flight set us back $153 per person and we flew with a company called Italia Airways. We then stayed at an Airbnb in Rome for $78 per person per night and Rome was quite cheap accommodation. London had been the most expensive by far at this point but at Rome at $78 per night this was our cheapest accommodation so far on the trip. We really enjoyed exploring Rome, looking at the Colosseum, uh, going through some galleries, exploring some churches and cathedrals. It was an amazing place to explore and we really enjoyed the food in Italy. It was amazing food and fairly easy except for the cobblestone pathways with our pram to get around. We also did a little day trip out to Florence. Now if I was doing it all over again we should have caught the train from Venice to Florence and then to Rome rather than doing a day trip from Rome back to Florence. Also, Florence was a beautiful city, great place to explore. We also had brunch at an Australian style cafe in Florence and the girls absolutely loved the coffee there. After enjoying our time in Rome and Florence, we then headed south to Positano. We stayed in a wonderful Airbnb on the hill at $249 per person per night. So London and Positano were our two most expensive accommodation costs. We caught a train from Rome to Naples and then a ferry to Positano and that set us back $343 per person. At this point in time we were not doing too many activities and spending most of our time just holidaying and enjoying our time off. We were therefore spending most of our money on our food budget. Our final country for this 25 day trip was to spend six nights in Greece. We're going to be stopping two nights in Athens, two nights in Santorini and two nights in Mykonos. Athens was actually our cheapest stop. We were able to stay in the center of town for $48 per person per night in a two-star hotel, which was absolutely fine for us. We wanted to save our money in Athens because we'd spent our money elsewhere in seeing London and going to Positano and splurging in some other locations. We stayed in a place called GK Athens. It was a great little place, a little bit weird, but we had a good time and mainly we're staying at the hotel just to sleep. So to get from Naples to Athens, we took an Aegean Air flight, which set us back $304 per person. After enjoying a couple of nights in Athens, we then made our way over to Santorini. Now this was where the real holiday began because at the end of our trip, we just wanted to kick back, sit by the beach, sit by the pool, um, have a drink, have some food and not do a whole lot. And that's exactly what we did. So in Santorini, we stayed in the Loisos Stylish Residences, which was a great place for $125 per person per night. And we enjoyed the cliff tops, going on walks, enjoying the food in Santorini. And we quite enjoyed some little shops and alleyways to go explore in the center of Fiora. We then finally went to our last destination, which was Mykonos, which is known as the party, you know, party island. With a one-year-old was quite interested in getting there and uh, we went to bed quite early compared to some of the other people in Mykonos. But we stayed at a place called the Kamari Hotel for $222 per person per night. When making our way around Europe and hitting four countries in 25 days with a one-year-old, the one thing I can say is make sure you spend at least two nights in each of the locations. Ideally, we could have spent three nights in places that we had spent two nights if we'd had more time and we could have stretched our trip out to a month rather than just doing 25 days. But spending three nights in each location was definitely a great amount of time to explore, to feel like you could settle and enjoy your holiday rather than feeling like you were moving constantly. We really stacked most of our activity expenses up front by going to the Man United game, by going to the Book of Mormon, by going to the Harry Potter experience and things like that in, in the UK. And then we spent more of our time towards the end of the trip, in particular in Positano and our time in Greece, just relaxing, going to the beach, sitting by the pool, exploring a few new restaurants and cafes and, and, and having more chilled time at the end of our trip. But spending three nights in each location was definitely a great amount of time to explore, to feel like you could settle and enjoy your holiday rather than feeling like you were moving constantly. So now's the time for the exciting part. What was the cost per person for the flights, the accommodation and some activities for our 25 days in Europe across those four countries. So the total for 25 days in Europe was $10,180 and that was flights, accommodation and activities. Part of me making this video is to break down the numbers so I actually remember what we spent. And of course, with my background as an accountant, I actually put all of these expenses in a spreadsheet so I could list them out and see every single night across our Europe trip. I don't think we're gonna be doing another Europe trip anytime soon because we do have another baby on the way. 
uh, which is due early next year, which is very exciting for us. But if you're looking at doing a Europe trip, hopefully our expenses gave you an idea. And for me, spending money on a trip like this was absolutely worth it. I know a lot of my channel talks about investing, but really going on a Europe trip, I don't think you're ever really going to regret it. We only get one chance on this earth. So as far as I see it, you need to find the balance between investing and then spending your money on these Europe trips and bigger ticket items to enjoy your time. The whole reason Emily and I invest and build our wealth and look to create wealth and create cash flow is to go and do trips like this and spend time together with family. The fact that Emily, Asa, myself and Nana, my mother-in-law, could spend our time together enjoying the trip across Europe. And that is the hot tip, bring your Nana if you have a one-year-old so you can go on a few nights out um, if that's possible. But being able to spend that time together was an experience we'll never forget. And so it was absolutely worth every dollar. So if you're planning for your next Europe trip, I hope you have a fantastic time. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Why am I sounding so philosophical?